Hello, my fellow pals. It's your boy Daniel Bandian here with another episode of the Pals TV, the Experience Podcast series. This is a series where we discuss topics in relation to positivity, appreciation, love, and support. Before we get started, I actually have some exciting news to share with you all. Our Pals online store is officially open, and I totally love the merchandise that we have to offer. Our catalog includes Pals-themed masks, a community hoodie, and artwork. And I just want to say shout out to at Layla Gala Art on Instagram. I totally love the purple phoenix painting. It is so beautiful, and I encourage you all, my fellow pals, to check it out. It is also available for purchase, and we'll be sure to update our pal store over time. So if you'd like to support your fellow pals, please be sure to head over to wearepals.net slash pals dash store. With that said, today's episode is going to be a little different as it's entirely audio based. I usually have my camera on, and of course, if you've seen my previous webisodes, y'all are familiar with my amazing rainbow lights. But at the moment, we're preparing for renovation around the house, and I'm still rearranging furniture around my room, so... Teardrop. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you all my pretty face, sadly. But hey, you can listen to our beautiful voices nonetheless. <laughs> and besides, when I woke up this morning, I saw a pimple on my forehead, so maybe it's a good idea that y'all don't see that. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Anyways, 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 anyways. I'm actually excited for today's interview as I'll be featuring a friend of mine. Her name is Vanessa Wong and she's a talented filmmaker and music creator. I actually met Vanessa in my documentary writing class and I've worked with her on set. She was actually the DP for my film, The ADHD Cycle, which I encourage you all to check out. On that note, I'm totally excited to learn more about Vanessa's background and her completed projects. So without any further ado, let's say hi to the wonderful Vanessa Wong. Oh, Hello, wow. Vanessa. How have you been? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for that really beautiful introduction. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I've been good. Yeah, pretty good, I would say. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just moved to like a new area um, in Melbourne. Uh, and it's been interesting, like moving out to a new house with new housemates and stuff. Um, and it's been like the perfect fit as well, because like everyone here is just, I mean, that's the topic of the podcast, right? They've been super supportive um, during my move and like they've just become like instant friends to me. So, yeah, things have been really good. I'm really glad to hear that, you know, that like you have a community who's there to like support you, especially mm. like during the time of your move. That's really nice to hear. Mm. Um, well, if you don't mind you. asking, like, you know, how does the place like look? Like, how is the new area you're in, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I don't mind at all. Um, it's very different to the rest of Melbourne because I'd say the council here is less strict. So the houses look actually kind of reminds me of San Francisco where we met. Ooh. They're very colorful and like everyone's gardens or oh, actually there's no gardens in SF really but like over here I would say everyone's really into gardening and like each house has a lot of character like they're from different eras my house in particular has like a very interesting like kind of Greek architecture like there's arches and stuff mm. in here but it's also like made of wood and then there's like all these I don't know every room in the house looks like it's owned by someone different because it kind of is um, I'll just have to give you some photos probably oh but that's there's awesome. plants yeah there's like a lot of collections of different items here like jars and like I, we kind of joke that it looks like a witch's house because we've just got <laughs> herbs everywhere and like just random items and people are like what's that and I'm like I don't know I live here but I have no idea what that is it's just been here for like ever well, yeah. I'm going to say is this, like, if it was owned by a witch, I guess she, no, she must have probably <laughs> used a potion that made the house so beautiful. Oh, thank so, you. Kind of like Howl's Moving Castle. Like, yes. That's the vibe. That's the yes. vibe that I have here. Yeah. Or Charmed or Sabrina the Teenage mm. Witch. Oh, oh Sabrina. <laughs> you know what's, like, interesting, like, with Sabrina? I know that there's, like, you know, there's, like, the Sabrina show, which is on Netflix. I forgot the name mm. of it. And I know there's also Sabrina. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Sabrina, I know the one that you're talking about. It's actually so dark. Like, mm -hmm. damn, it is graphic and, mm -hmm. like, messed up. Like, I didn't expect that when I, I first saw it. That one. I got to check that one out. But, like, here's mm. what's kind of interesting. So it's like, you know, I know the one on Netflix right now is the one that um, is trending right now. I know that, like, you know, when I was younger, my mom actually used to watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but then the, the sitcom that was on the WB channel... 
For me, however, this is going to be funny, but I actually used to watch the Sabrina cartoon from the 60s slash 70s. The one where oh. she would cross over with the Archies. I used to watch yes. that one. Yes, damn, you're like a vintage person, Ben. <laughs> no, wow. It's crazy. That's really cool. But yeah, mm. but going back to the topic, sorry for going a little bit off topic. I guess I Don't be like, sorry. But all I got <laughs> oh to say is that, um, yeah, I'm really happy to hear that it's like a really nice house and it's really beautiful to hear that there's like gardening right now because it's like based on like where oh, I'm thank at, you. It's, we don't really typically see those except for the botanical gardens. Wow. Yeah. I think that's something I missed when I was living there with you, like when we were studying at SF State. Like I think I missed the greenery and like literally here, my life is that I'll wake up in the morning and then I'll go to the garden and I'll like pick tomatoes from the garden. I'll just like eat those. It feels pretty crazy. Like I'm just foraging in our garden. Also, we have like an insane amount of zucchinis at the moment like Ooh. 20 I'll send you a photo but they're like giant zucchinis they're like one meter long each one and we zucchini? just don't know what to do with them yeah yeah zucchinis are delicious I love zucchini like let me oh, put good this I know that like some people are like I hate veggies like you know when they're like ew like mm. whenever like the kids are like ew I hate veggies but then I always loved zucchini I don't know why but there was just something about zucchini it was just I don't know but every time I ate zucchini I felt like the more that I ate it the more buff I was gonna get <laughs> oh interesting kind of like Popeye, Popeye. Zucchini, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like a phallic Popeye that's cool oh. So speaking of which, um, to my fellow pals, if you're wondering how I met Vanessa, because she talks about like SF, she currently resides in uh, Melbourne. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she currently Not resides Sydney. in Sydney. Not yeah, Sydney. I almost, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, yeah, earlier, like earlier, like prior to this, I accidentally almost said Sydney. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> I, I forgive Melbourne. you. That's oh just gosh. because of Australian marketing and like, and people think Nemo? that's our capital city as well, but it's not. Well, you're, wait, really? Yeah. I didn't know mm. that. Oh, like, fun fact. It's not Sydney. It's Canberra. And Canberra. Sydney is just the one with the opera house and the bridge, but they're not the capital city. So. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confirm one thing that like me, I'm in the US and I didn't even know this for a fact until last minute. So, you know, the state New York, mm. the capital of New York isn't even New York City. It's Albany. Yeah. I was shocked when I found that out. I thought it was Albany. I thought it was Albany. Albany. That's weird. I don't even know what that is. Oh, I feel bad. Sorry. Oh, and no, it was, and with <laughs> regards to Nevada, I thought the capital of Nevada was Las Vegas, but it's not. It's actually Carson City. I didn't even know what Nevada was till just then. So, so all the so all the pals who are located in Nevada, like you know, listening to this, I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Yes, yes. <laughs> but going back to like how me and Vanessa met, I was taking a documentary writing class, and Vanessa was also in that class as well. So of course, like, you know, I was just sitting, then Vanessa came up to me and said, hi. And then like, I said, hi back. So of course it's like, you know, since Vanessa made the first initial contact, like, you know, I was like, hi. And then we just kept on like engaging conversations. And then I really mm. loved Vanessa. Like she was so much fun to Aww. talk to. Oh, I'm so glad. I was actually so nervous to like walk up to you and say hi, because I was told that Americans don't really do that. Like they don't go up to each other in the first class and be like, hello, what's up? Like, and it's like a weird thing to do. That's what I was told by someone. Is that true? Um, like, I'd say, I guess it kind of depends on who you ask. I mean, typically, mm. like maybe in our class, it kind of is expected. But the reason for mm. why people used to do that, it's not because they're like snooty or anything. The reason for why we didn't typically do that was because we were just as shy as everyone else. Mm. That's the I reason see. why. So it's not that we were snooty or anything. We're just shy. No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay, I'm super glad that we spoke. And same with Maxine as well. For real. Oh immediately, it was just so easy to talk to both of you. Yeah, um, for real. Shout out to Maxine. Once you're listening to this, I would love to interview you next, girl. <laughs> Yay. But yeah. Um, I would listen. For reals. But yeah, like continuing on like the story with me and Vanessa, um, me and Vanessa met in the documentary writing class. I did my project on cosplaying. <laughs> it was such a fun project. And then I remember like Vanessa, you did your project on like, it's never too late to grow up or something like that. And I actually really, I really don't concept. remember. Thank <laughs> you. I got to tell you, like I actually made that up like before the presentation because like I did put effort into it, but I just, I, I guess I hadn't had it ready until right before it. And like, it was an idea that I'd had for a while. And then I did a last minute pitch in my mind. So I, I really was even, like, 
yeah I was so nervous like oh my goodness I didn't um, even know that was last minute I was like because that was, was. executed great job oh Vanessa. thanks thank you oh yeah I, I remember that now yeah. Mm-hmm. Continuing on, currently, even to this day, I'm still interning for the Documentary Film Institute. I actually joined the Doc Film Institute back in June 2019. And then when we were in need of more like interns, I actually referred Vanessa. And then eventually in fall 2019, Vanessa joined me at the Doc Film Institute. And I love yes, her. Yes, yes. Um, Thanks for that in there. It was a great, um, it was like the best internship I've done. Like, real, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone was just awesome. Um, I hope I can come back and join again at some stage when things open up again but we'll see love for you too oh thanks if you don't mind me asking vanessa so going in depth about like you know your experiences like with filmmaking the first thing that i actually wanted to ask was you know in terms of film what do you particularly like to do do you like to do editing cinematography oh, or writing that's a good question i i'm a bit all over the place i'm even like hesitant to call myself a filmmaker sometimes because i don't know if I'll ever get to like make a film on my own but I do love like my current job is editing and I edit like other people's footage um just basically to get paid and pay rent or whatever so that's what I do for a job um and I guess in terms of what I like I think camera operation is like my favorite thing because I'm constantly thinking in shots whenever I imagine like a scene or like I'm thinking about framing and like what I want to draw your eye to I guess and I just love holding the camera um because I feel like you just can't think about anything else when you're doing that you know and time just like sort of stands still and you're just so in the moment and so present and that's what I like about um holding the camera uh and in terms of like yeah writing I I think I wish I could be a writer but I don't feel like I have the patience for it and like I haven't figured out a sort of method of getting myself to write like I'm the kind of person who has like sticky notes all over my walls and like I'm constantly carrying a notebook and I think I've romanticized the idea of writing on the go and stuff but I've never completed a full script before. Like I've done shorts, but like, yeah, the last one I did was probably Hoxter's class um, ages ago. So I like the idea of writing. I think I'm most at peace when I'm like camera operating or like thinking about cinematography, but I do editing as my job. Awesome. If that's, that's a three-part answer for you. Oh, that's a pretty great answer. That's a pretty great answer. You know, I've actually <laughs> seen your work, the work that you do, like, you know, the camera work, and it's really amazing. Mm. It's like you have oh, the eye you. for it and you have the skills for it, which is why I, oh, really thank like, you know, you. I really like the works that you do with regards to, you know, cinematography. And I've also like, you know, at the internship, I've also observed your editing and it's also very amazing. Well done, Vanessa. Oh, um, thanks so much. You're very sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. And to be honest here, I actually do consider you a filmmaker in my heart wow because you have the power to do it Vanessa thank you I that's what I want in life (laughs) yeah so um right now so I so you said that currently you're working right now is it like a freelance or is it like a Mm. well I currently I do like random jobs for different clients I suppose so I at the moment it's mostly corporate stuff and like as you know like Melbourne was in a really long harsh lockdown for ages so like meeting up in crews was for like people who are beginners like me was pretty impossible unless you had like, you know, some kind of contract with like a TV station or whatever. Like I'm pretty sure. Yeah. There's just like less work here at the moment for creatives, which is really difficult. Um, but yeah, I, for my work, I sort of show up and there's like a two person crew and we just like set up lights and then cameras and like, we just shoot interviews and stuff. And then my job is to edit those and like, yeah they roll them out through their social media and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's actually a very important topic to address because I know like, you know, at this time of the pandemic, and I know that you're currently based in Australia, but I feel like, you know, an audience who even in another country, even if they're in the US, I feel like an audience who could hear more about your story could also, you know, find some inspiration about it. And, you know, maybe we could possibly have some other, you know, listeners coming from Australia who are interested in wanting to pursue filmmaking. With regards to your journey, um, because I know that times are hard right now. So mm. if you don't mind me asking, I just wanted to know, like, how did you manage to, like, you know, be able to find something as well as do you have any advice to any of our pals who are struggling to find something as well? Mm. Oh, that's ooh, big questions. Yeah, I think I never fully had a plan for how to deal with this uh, lockdown career wise or like just emotionally. 
because none of us have experienced it before, right? And like, I think I've had periods of my life where I almost had a lockdown in a way because of like, you know, depression and like not wanting to leave the house. But this time, I suppose we were involuntarily trapped at home, which is a different beast altogether. So I think how I got through it, I think is uh, definitely calling friends helped a lot and like planning out your day and remembering that like there is a point where we get to leave. Um, And we recently had like a five day lockdown in Melbourne, which was really for some reason, it was more painful than the month, the multiple month one, because I think it was a harsh reminder that at any point they could lock us back up again. Um, But it's not all as dramatic as I'm making it out to be because we still have options to like, you know, go for walks in the park and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, something that was really important was forcing yourself to get out and do the things that you have to do to stay healthy. Like, you know, going on a walk and calling a friend, even if you really don't feel like it. Um, Cause yeah, once you let slip of that routine and those habits, that's when things get harder. Um, as for career wise, okay, this is something that happened to me, which was really, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of other people, but I started accepting jobs that were way below the standard that I would normally set for myself, like on a personal level and like, yeah, just the way I was being treated and money wise. So I accepted jobs that there was no guarantee of pay. I would do jobs for people that weren't actually my friends. And like they, I was in a situation where I edited this uh, wedding video over the first couple of months of lockdown. And then last minute he lost it at me and was like, well, I'm just not going to pay you anymore. Um, Cause like, this has taken a long time. And like, but whenever I called him up to do like a co-edit and he would like watch me do it, he would be playing games or like he, he wasn't taking it seriously. And I realized later that he was just using me to go through the raw footage and like, yeah, do the, the hard part of the edit basically. And so that ended awfully. I also worked for another client who tried to pick me up on the basis of like that I was an intern but I am not an intern I think that's a hard thing to do as well like to set boundaries with like this is what I want from this job um this is what I'm okay with but I didn't have any of that because I was accepting anything that came my way because I was so desperate for work um yeah and that's changed now I think now that things are opened up I'm like very okay with being like I'm not doing that job because I don't want to. So yeah, I think setting standards for yourself is the biggest thing. Wow, that was a long rant. I feel like I lost sight of the question almost. Did I answer your question? I think you actually did provide like a pretty good start. And I feel like that experience that you shared is definitely important because it's like, you know, eventually like over time, and I'm sorry to hear about the experiences that you went through, but you know, I'm really glad that like right now with things opening up, I'm actually glad to hear that you are realizing if this is how I'm going to be treated, maybe I shouldn't take this. And I'm glad that like, mm. you're putting your foot down the first thing I wanted to ask was what advice would you have for other people who are kind of in a similar boat with like what you went through and second of all how did you manage to like ultimately overcome it and with all the hardships that happened how did you manage to like you know get into where you're at right now Mm, good question um so first let's I'll answer your second question first Mm -hmm. um I think I had to just literally sit down and write down how I was feeling because I started to realize that I was stressed constantly like throughout the day even when I wasn't working it's because I was anticipating something awful happening at my job because of the people that I worked with like they low-key were like insulting on a personal level well not low-key they actually were um and they were kind of bullies so I realized like once I identified that I was like I had to ask myself am I okay with this and I was like no, I'm not. So bye. Um, And it was as as simple as that. It's a lot simpler than it um, seems to be a lot of the time. So that's how I got through that. I just literally cut out anyone that I thought wasn't respecting me in terms of work. Um, And in terms of advice, like, okay, I think don't be afraid to directly message people, like random people on uh, social media and like, I guess it's hard because there's less events at the moment, but you'll find jobs in very surprising places. Like I got this client that I'm currently working with because of the client that I lost. So um, this guy that I currently work with, who's awesome, he 
was on the set of um, the old client I worked with and we just started talking and I took that opportunity to try and tell him what I was able to do. So I, I walked up to him and I was like, I'm an editor. I do this and I'm open to looking for work if that's, you know, what you're interested in. It wasn't an interview. We weren't, he wasn't openly looking for like, you know, recruitment or whatever. But from there, like he brought me on because I showed initiative, I guess, and was like, yeah, look, I'm willing to work. Like, these are my hours. And like, I guess be really clear about what you're looking for, but also like keep an open mind as well. Cause you'll meet people in random places that, um, will give you work I guess but that's a very particular like kind of work that I do it's just like I think there's a lot of people looking for editors also like a lot of people look for editors online as well so I would look online or you know what message like YouTubers and stuff and be like are you looking for an editor I could like maximize your time and then like you know do a demonstration of what you can do have a reel ready and stuff and like yeah just show up to it and like commit to it I guess but hmm I don't know whether I'm qualified to give advice because I'm still working my shit out, you know? No, that's pretty yeah. good. That's really, that's really great advice. And it's actually oh, thanks. It's straight to the point. And it's actually, it's actually the real way to go right now because the thing that you were alluding to was networking and taking initiative. That's actually an important thing that we all need to do at some point if we in order to like, you know, find opportunities because we assume that we're gonna get a job if we just fill out an application. But unfortunately. Mm-hmm. That's actually kind of tricky because that's not always guaranteed. Yeah. You're more it's likely definitely to, not. Yeah, you're more likely to have an advantage if you network with someone. Like for example, like if you apply for a job, um, what you should also do is connect with that recruiter on LinkedIn and then try to establish a relationship, like messaging the recruiter. But it's also important at the same time to not like you know not to get too intrusive or anything because at the day at the end of the day you're also trying to pitch yourself and sell yourself. So, of course, Mm. but at the same time, by you taking initiative and actually reaching out to someone and like, you know, asking, I would like to work with you on this, it actually is going to leave a pretty great impression on them. So, you know, Vanessa, thank you so much for sharing that. That is very like, you know, one of the best pieces of advice. Thanks. I'm glad. I have one more thing to add, actually. It's not so much about your skills, like what you can currently do, because you can learn that anyway. Like, I think recruiters are looking for people that are willing to like try and learn new things and like who have like a good um, like attitude and who are easy to be around a lot of the time because that's what my uh, colleague said to me he's like I didn't choose you because of your skill set I chose you because you're easy to talk to easy to work with and like you know you're honest and upfront about things so yeah you should like if you meet someone try to get to know them as a person before you pitch your work stuff because that's how we got talking we were like oh we have the same sort of values and like yeah um and anyway you shouldn't work with someone who just picks you based off of your skills because what if they're like an asshole and then you find out later like you don't work well together it doesn't matter how skilled you are like you're just not going to work well together so pick someone like try to look for companies or people that share your same like values and mindset as well I really like that Vanessa I really like that Vanessa so thanks when it comes to like jobs at the end of the day, if you feel that you're in a workplace that you feel is toxic, try to ask yourself, is it really worth doing all of this? That's exactly it. And they're not just buying, like, they're not just paying you to do work. They're also buying your brain space. Like, they're buying up your time and, like, how much time you have on yourself. There, there's so much that you miss out on if you decide to work with a company that treats you poorly because it, mm-hmm. it messes up with your self-esteem. It messes with your mind on a daily basis they're buying up they're renting your brain like which is a weird thing to say but it's kind of true so you have to work with someone that doesn't do that Mm -hmm. um it's also an aspect what i like that you bring that up because it connects a little bit to mental health as well mm. you know mental well-being because it's like even if you have let me put it this way you may be getting like even if you're getting a good pay and then it's like you're doing like the best work but it's like Mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to put yourself through all of this if you know, if it's going to drain you mentally or and as well as physically. Mm, definitely. Like mm-hmm. you can't work well if you're not feeling good when you're not healthy. And that's like, especially on set, I feel like people prioritize like getting the shot over like how people are feeling around. And like, it's really a problem. Although I haven't been on like a Hollywood set or whatever, but like, yeah, I think people forget that the whole point of making art is to like connect with others or like, you know, Mm-hmm. You don't have to treat people like sh- to make something good. 
For real. You don't. And I actually like that you bring up, you know, the topic of onset because I actually, that's actually something I wanted to get into later because I feel like that's going to be a very important topic to address. But regards to like, you know, working on set or actually with regards to production, you know, what I wanted to ask was what are some of the projects that you've worked on? It's been a long time before, like since I've worked on something here because it's just not been allowed. Um, but I think we're gearing up to like allow that to happen again. I think. I always think about you. You remember Jessica Payne? Mm, yeah, she was in my uh, creating Story Worlds class. Mm, I remember working on her set, and she was the yeah, she was the director, and I was cam up, and like, oh wow, I learned so much being on that set. Like, and I won't mention names and stuff, but I definitely felt as if some people were trying to push me off of <gasps> being camera up, and mm. like, I really had to fight to be there. Yeah, and Jessica, you know. It was her set and she was very clear. She was like, we're all here to learn and please respect each other. But some dudes like kept trying to take over and I am in shock at like how some of them behaved or like, you know, some of the comments they made. It was just very like, there was a strange dichotomy on that set at times, but Jessica did an incredible job of handling it and she never swept anything under the rug. She was extremely upfront about everything and she is like a natural leader as well, which made things very easy. But yeah, I always felt like to the topic of like support, I felt very supported by her and she would anticipate people's needs on set as well. Like she would know if something was wrong just by, you know, making eye contact with someone or like, she'd literally check in and be like are you okay what's going on like and yeah I think there was a pretty good uh amount of like diversity on that set as well but it definitely felt as if like the dynamic felt as if that most of the men on set were in control of the technical side of things or like that since it was their equipment that they were able to push us around for it that's that is what it felt like um but again like I walked off that production feeling like fulfilled and that I'd learned a lot so that's not I don't take away the negative side of it I just try to remember like yeah it taught me how to like stand up for myself and like yeah last minute like they basically built up the camera and the rig and everything without me present and they built it so that it would be hard for me to use it like <laughs> and they expected or anticipated that I wouldn't be able to carry it so yeah it was it felt it was extremely dismissive. And I think the person who was in charge of that, like they didn't even see me as a person because they knew that if I wasn't camera up, I'd have no role there because they were heavily involved in the process of like DPing and stuff and, and like setting up the shots, the shot list. But I wasn't involved in that because at the very beginning, there was a conversation about whether I wanted to be involved with the cinematography or like camera upping because that's how Jessica wanted to divide or like use those roles. And yeah, last minute, I almost got pushed off of the production completely because of this person. And it didn't happen because Jessica put her foot down and supported me and said, no, you will not do this. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty dramatic situation, but handled very well by Jessica. You know, all I got to say is yeah. that, you know, I'm really glad to hear that, you know, Jessica was there. Like, I'm really glad that she was, you know, very consistent. And I'm glad that she always stood up for you. And I feel like that's something that's mm. important. We need more, you know filmmakers especially directors who will do that who will also mm -hmm. ensure that on set that the entire crew is fine and that we literally do whatever we can to stop you know conflicts from happening and I'm really sorry to hear that you know that other people who are on the crew treated you that way because that's thank really you hard to do it's not it was rough it was I had to be on it constantly like I felt like people were constantly watching me it's it's not fair it is a sexist thing too like if I screw up once damn my record is like shot like but if they screw up once they'll be like oh well I look at all these other things I can do like my I think yeah it was I was like walking on a tightrope at times and I felt like another problem with like that way of thinking is that like you forget that you're actually a team like when you're on a crew you're supposed to be a team and mm -hmm. you're all making things together and you all want it to be good whatever it is that you're making and some people walk onto set and think this is my opportunity to show what I can do. And like, well, it is in a way, but you can still do that while being a team and having like a group team mindset. And some people like there was one comment that was made under the breath of someone who was part of this problem. And he said, 
that's not going to look good on my reel. And I was like, oh, so you don't care about what it's going to look like as a film, but you just like, it's, okay, interesting. Like, and when that comment was made, I was just like, it all makes sense now. Like, you're just trying to use this production as like a little star on your belt or whatever. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. So oh people, you have to remember that you're a team when you're a crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With regards to like, you know, being on set, okay? I understand that mishaps always happen. I always feel that, however, if a mishap or a mistake happens, the crew should not be like, they should not be like that. Regardless of everything, it's important that everybody is comfortable no matter what. So mm. what I wanted to ask you was, how can we all support each other on set? Ooh, that's a big question. I think you need to think about the priorities. Like sometimes people can get really carried away thinking about the end product, I guess, but then they're not being like present in the moment and like observing what's actually happening around them. Like the dynamics on set and like, yeah, I think it's important. Like one thing you can do is like make eye contact with people and like actually, you know, when you're not rolling, you can like actually talk to people like, are you, are you okay? And that's a simple thing. And that seems like an obvious thing, but I guess like one interaction like that during the day can change someone's entire mindset for the whole day. Like just to be noticed or just to be asked if they're doing all right. Cause it reminds them that like they are more important, important as a person than, you know, any production or like, you know, these are, these are real lives here and like we're all putting our lives on hold to like be there and like, you know, make something good together. So mm -hmm. yeah, the priority should be to be present and like be aware of people around you. Although that is something that, that might seem like a quite uh, radical or like unique perspective for someone who wants to be a filmmaker. Cause I think, yeah, I don't know. I think Hollywood obviously is like <laughs> and people are all, like I think because like it's such a normal thing to hear like oh I decided to not eat because I didn't want my stomach to make noises during oh that God. take or like I didn't I think it's best to this is real advice that I received from someone which was don't drink water during the day because then you'll have to leave for a bathroom break on set and I'm like mm. what but does it have to be like that like does it does it really have to be like that? Yeah, people definitely try to prioritize the end product over like actual people standing right in front of them in the moment who may not be feeling good or like, yeah. And I think, mm, I think it's important to like override any like set rituals and stuff like with, I guess, someone, if someone's feeling like sh you shouldn't force them to do something like just don't you know like because mm -hmm. there were so many times where I was you know I feel like I was messing up or like I didn't know how to do something and like people would just be like do it again do it again or like you know and that's just not the right method I think you have to talk to people like they're actually people and like obviously there is a method for you know the way people speak on set with the dragon and like the shortcuts of like you know being able to say like oh striking or like all that stuff that's that's that should still remain but I think you should still remember that everyone's a person and like yeah For real. It's, mm, and I guess another thing too like with talent or like actors something that I found to be quite consistent is that the talent or like the people on set they don't necessarily want to be called the talent or like you know the actor you can just call them by their name sometimes like especially if it's a student set, like I get that you're trying to be professional, but don't like alienate or like, you know, depersonalize someone just because they're the talent and they're going to do a better job if they're comfortable anyway. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Actually, that's very important that you mentioned that because there always seems to be like this pressure that you put on the entire crew. I guess, yes, it is in a way kind of selfish. And I understand why people may have this mindset at the same time. Why, like, I want the best product possible. But at the same time, how can you actually get the best product possible if you're going to put all that negative energy on the process? If you're going to put all that negative mm. energy on the process, that's not going to guarantee the best product possible. 100%. And like we hear about all these insane films right now, which are, you know, the classics or whatever. And like, oh, did you know that that actor actually broke both of his legs to get that shot? And we use those examples as like, you know, tales of heroism. Like, oh, you sacrifice yourself to get the shot but that's a bad thing to do don't do something stupid just in the moment like please 
you want to live long and last so that you can be there to make more films in the future and like just don't don't kill yourself trying to do something because you feel pressured Mm -hmm. you know and I think yeah on that topic of like we look back on these films and like all the sacrifice and stuff why do we have to keep working like that like Mm -hmm. who made the rule that you have to completely suffer all the time for art like I don't know I don't know whether I agree with that for real (laughs) you know as time goes by we start to see more um stories about Hollywood you know scandals or a lot of problems that come from Hollywood therefore it's Mm. our job as us future filmmakers Mm. to put an end Mm. to all of that that's why it's 100% 100% we're in a new era of like openness and um yeah Mm -hmm. you know I just want to say thank you so much for like you know sharing all of that you know all of that is very helpful and to our fellow pals who are listening I know that this topic sounds a bit stressful and Mm. it sounds like a lot to take in but it's not our intention to scare any of you it's more oh no (laughs) it's more so we're just bringing this up because unfortunately this is reality but we want to assure you that everything is going to be fine in the end and we want to share with you advice and also raise awareness about some of these issues that are happening so that way we can avoid them in the future Mm -hmm. yeah well sorry if i i did yell quite a bit just then but i'm just very passionate no it's all good i'm yelling too what's up (laughs) i love it i I wish that you could just become an energy drink that i could have every day that would be great red bull it gives you wings (laughs) Mm. i guess i'm just you know i guess like let me just like shift the tone a little bit like you know into like i guess we'll go into more of the positive realm um Mm. i guess what i wanted to ask was you know were there any other like sets that you've worked on or any of projects of your own that you have done um I suppose this is sort of related to filmmaking in that it's like uh, media but I am really into like music production at the moment and Ooh. like for a while like before I um went overseas I was really into sound design for film and like so I've started um branching out to like actually making my own songs and also like uh, using Ableton and stuff so that's like I've been finding it difficult to like be organized and like on task with that but I'm still very much a beginner and like I'm learning from scratch so uh, I would say my projects involve like forcing myself to do like an hour of music a day ish Mm. whether or not I share anything um and I would consider like a project to be something that I just share briefly whether it's like 30 seconds or like a couple minutes but yeah you know I'm really you know here I've actually heard some of the music that you've made like you know the pebble oh. that was really amazing of course I'm by the way you my fellow pals I'm going to link all of that pretty soon so I encourage you all to check that out the oh pebble God, it's thank really, you like your voice it reminds me a bit of you know like you know Billie Eilish or Lana Del Rey oh thank you everyone Gwen says Stefani. that I sound like Billie Eilish Gwen Stefani oh. Oh, Gwen. Oh, oh yes. That, thank you. So That's you the Ableton. loveliest compliment. Mm-hmm. You use Ableton, right? Ah, yes, I do. And I also just, um, yesterday, I just started using a loop machine for the first mm. time. And like, I found that really fun. So I'm going to keep trying new things with that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Ableton. I wish I was able to use Ableton. <laughs> Me so, too. I wish I was <laughs> able to, but I'm unable to use Ableton. <laughs> That is a okay. <laughs> you will be able soon. <laughs> I love this. I love this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Another mm. thing I want to ask was, you know, what are some of your favorite films? Mm, I recently saw Minari in cinemas and I thought that was beautiful. And like, uh, like it was also just really overwhelming emotionally, like to see so many Asian faces on screen like that. Um, have you heard of Minari? No, I have not. I, I you out. should definitely check it out. It's really yeah. beautiful. It's about like a Korean family that is settling in America. Um, and they call it like a hillbilly town. I don't know. It's half in English, half in Korean. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, basically the dad has a big dream of like setting up a farm where he'll grow all these Korean vegetables. Um, and they just show a lot of the struggles that, like immigrant families would have had during that time well mm-hmm. I think their story is particularly unique because of the area that they moved to and like the differences in culture and all that but mm-hmm. um it's really beautiful and like 
it just it te- uh, I teared up like a lot because it just reminded me of like how hard Asian parents work to like set up a life for their kids and how like just all the self-sacrifice and like yeah like it was really it was really beautiful but also actually no I can't say it because it's a spoiler I I'm gonna stop talking about it I will just say that I loved the cinematography it was really stunning and like there's a really beautiful like haunting feeling about it I, and you'll you'll see what I mean when you see it I'll check uh, it highly out. recommend mm. oh. and Stephen Ewan in it Ooh, he is beautiful like damn <laughs> Ooh, is it I'll, yeah. I'll be sure to check it out if it's not on netflix or anything i'll i'll, I'll find a way to view it like i mm. am not gonna do the illegal streaming i will not sure i'm not going to do it sure yeah okay <laughs> but like you know i'll actually i would love to check it out you know whether it's you know if it's not on netflix i'll see if maybe i could rent it from amazon prime or something but i'll definitely like you know check it out overall so now i guess before we get into um the topic of appreciation well actually no it is going to be the topic of appreciation you know <laughs> like mentioned was that you know i get but i'm going to do appreciation on my end first vanessa mm-hmm. i appreciate you thank you so much for like oh. such an amazing friend vanessa you've been like, oh, you're really an amazing appreciate friend. our friendship you know i really appreciate like you know also working with you on set like you remember i remember during the pluralities like 2019 conference it's like you know i was doing like camera work and then vanessa was there too like she did amazing oh. i loved it Thank you. That was such a fun time. Mm-hmm. I thank you. I appreciate you very much as well. Like mm-hmm. you made things, you made everyone's days brighter all the time, just like by smiling and like being there. And yes, you've, you're like a humidifier for good vibes, mm-hmm. I would say. <laughs> oh my gosh. All I got to say is that, you know, the, the works that you do, like with your cinematography, it's so amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. I haven't shot anything for a long time, mm-hmm. but I've also... I'm constantly taking photos on my phone and like my camera just to like I guess I can't help it like I'm always looking at things like they could be in a movie um Mm -hmm. so I haven't stopped and I'm not gonna stop ever (laughs) so you know I guess what I wanted to ask was what do you appreciate Mm. the most you know about filmmaking oh damn all right that's a big question actually wrote some things down for that one um okay I like how excited people get about film um especially like whether it's going to the movies or like on set like I think it just brings out this like real liveliness in people and like it's something that people really just care about to the point of like insanity you know which I think is how you should feel about things that you love or things that excite you so I love that and that's what I appreciate about it. And I also appreciate, um, I guess, like how hard people do work on set. Like I would, I know I was saying, don't like throw away your health for it. But I think the perseverance that people have, it just gets me excited and makes me want to persevere as well. And I appreciate that, like when I'm working with a really good team, that we're all in it together and like, you know, we all just keep each other strong through it. So yeah, the teamwork and like the people, that's what I appreciate as well. Um, and I also, beyond that, like when you go see a film, like I think there's just so much work that you don't see, like behind the scenes that, you know, maybe someone were, uh, was sick that day and like, so they had a strange, like raspy voice, like one of the actors, but then that just still makes it into the film for whatever reason. And like that just becomes a part of like, the crystallization of the film and it's there forever you know and mm-hmm. I think that it's so interesting that films are like a really interesting pocket of time or like you know they're almost like a miracle because so many things have to fall in place mm-hmm. to become a film and I think that's what's another thing that's just so special about it mm-hmm. um yeah and like I guess the more that I learn about film as well the more I realize I just have no idea about like I realize that I just know so little so there's just always like yeah there's just more to know about and everything's connected like you know when someone chooses to wear like a red dress on set the lighting has to change or like you know the camera settings or like when someone like when it's a windy day someone has to change like you know 
I don't know, it, just everything's connected, if that makes sense in film. And that's something that's really unique to that. Um, I, wow, I've said a lot of stuff. That's pretty much everything I wrote down. Um, <laughs> I appreciate all of those things it's a awesome. lot. Yes, yes. And, you know, I really appreciate <laughs> you sharing that because that sounds like, you know, oh. so much. it's like, you know, the thing that like makes a filmmaking so much fun is the fact that it's fun. That's what makes filmmaking mm. fun. There's like, yeah, no- and don't forget that. Don't forget that spark. Because we're at that age now where we're going into jobs, we're sacrificing, like, you know, having fun for money and all that stuff. But don't forget the spark or like the thing that first drew you to what you love because, you know, that's the reason why you got into it, right? For real. So, yeah. mm, remember why you started what you started. Definitely. I also wanted to ask, like, with that topic in mind, what do you appreciate the most about watching films? What do you believe are the values and benefits of watching movies? Oh, my goodness. Like, I love going to the cinema. I think that's the thing that broke my heart the most during lockdown, that I couldn't go to the cinema. And when I, I guess I love the atmosphere. And I love that, like, just the mutual respect that we all have when we're sitting there together, like the solidarity um, and the silences between like scenes or whatever like uh I love the like the hustle as everyone goes in and sits down and everyone's like oh like I'm so excited like oh I'm like during the previews I was like oh I'm gonna see that later like oh and then um yeah I guess it's just different from like watching a movie alone and Mm -hmm. like I appreciate that people block out the time in their day to like really be present and like sit with other people and just watch as like one common audience um and I like that it's different every single time like I saw Parasite maybe four times in cinema I love Parasite right it's and each time like it was a different reaction like I noticed that I watched it with Jessica actually for the first time at that weird Stonestown (laughs) wall cinema where all the seats are on an angle and like there's someone just in there doing like a an essay eating like mac and cheese in the back and like there's just it's just such a weird vibe there but the um, Stonestown UA Regal Theater yes it's just such a weird and there's only like one person working there and like I don't know I watched Parasite there and damn it like blew our minds but no audible reactions from the audience like it was just such a strange experience and then I watched again once it picked up popularity I watched again at a different more like mainstreamy cinema and everyone was hooked like from the beginning everyone was going <gasps> ah and like screaming through it and then another different time I watched it in Australia when it because you know how we get everything late like I watched it again here and everyone was laughing through it the whole time they thought it was like I mean it was a comedy but they were laughing at all the wrong parts and I was like what oh, the no. like what is what's go- are you just laughing because you're afraid like what's the deal so I appreciate that people are so vulnerable like when they're sitting there like they're just yeah glued to the screen and they're sort of like just having reactions as they come um so I like that as well it was awesome if I could explain like I will admit like when Parasite when I watched Parasite myself mm. I will also admit that I kind of laughed at some of the inappropriate I, did. I, did. Of the I actually did not because I found it hilarious okay well maybe that was partially it but it's because it's like you get that like little feeling of all this adrenaline it's like you don't know how to react so of course it's like you're also mm. laughing, partially nervous mm. so I laughed just, like so, so much, much. <laughs> oh, when you know when uh the brother is like laughing after he had brain damage like I was laughing during that I was like that's because I'm afraid and I don't know how to react to this like I feel weird I hate this I kind of laughed during that scene too because he started laughing the reason oh god it was funny why I laughed the reason for why I laughed was because it was bizarre that you would laugh at someone like this Mm, mm. that's why I laughed (laughs) <laughs> oh my god you <laughs> actually have the best laugh like it's it's just so raucous <laughs> like I just yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, okay, I'm oh you you're crazy oh my gosh I just want to say you know thank you so much Vanessa for coming here to the pals tv podcast you know I really appreciate oh. <laughs> you um you know taking the time to meet with me and I really you know Hope we could like, you know, reunite again. And I hope to feature you up here for, you know, another segment. 
Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me. And like, yeah, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Sorry, it's been like delayed. I guess like life keeps happening and yeah, I'm a little disorganized, but thank you so much for doing this with me. And I just really loved speaking with you again. It's great to hear your voice. So we'll do it again for sure. What I wanted to ask was in the meantime, how can our fellow pals reach you in terms of social media or contact you for you know any film related inquiries oh um yeah just like message me on insta I've kind of stopped using Facebook as much I don't know whether you heard but like Australia Australian news is now banned officially on Facebook oh. because we're having a giant fight with Google or whatever and like oh they've completely just eradicated all official Australian news sites and stuff and only like parody news is allowed now which is hilarious I think hmm. um so anyway like I don't use Facebook too much I know Instagram's owned by Facebook but like DM me on Insta I guess or email me like either way is good awesome um with that being said my fellow pals I'll go ahead and then link Vanessa's social media accounts as well as her um email in our description below I'll actually have it in the title card that I'm going to create myself yay thank you thanks so much Daniel you're welcome Vanessa you know with that being said Thank you so much, my fellow pals, for tuning in. I am your host, Daniel Bandian, signing off for today. Take care, my fellow pals. And by the way, Vanessa, just so you know, even though I say goodbye, I don't know if you know this, but at the part where you have to (laughs) edit it, I actually get a good epilogue message. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet, but that's cool. It's all good. So I'm actually going to continue our mini convo, like, at the very end. Yay! This part is going to happen, like, when the credits are over.